In times of crisis, companies need to be prepared. And going digital is essential to be ready for the future. Today, we'd like to look at the state of digitalization in Europe. At the European Investment Bank, we have to out the figures and call our experts to give us a clear view of the situation. From the heart of Europe to the whole world. This is What's the Matter. What is the state of digitalization in Europe today? To answer this question, we have the latest digitalization report prepared by the European Investment Bank. The report analyzes how businesses have succeeded or failed to use digital technology to respond to one of the biggest challenges the world has faced in decades, COVID-19. We surveyed intensively, gathering the views of 12,000 businesses in Europe and 800 in the United States. This is the main takeaway. 46%, almost half of the European firms, took action to become more digital, promoting things like remote services, teleworking and online meetings. So good news, the pandemic has sped up the pace of digital transformation in Europe, though not as much as it did in the United States. However, digitalization goes well beyond video conferencing or food delivery services. It is about using advanced digital technologies, such as 3D printing, robotics, big data, drones, the Internet of Things. And when it comes to this, we have a problem. The number of European firms investing in these technologies has dropped from 63% in 2020 to 61% in 2021, with the United States again in the lead. In fact, one out of four European firms made no investment at all in digital transformation in 2021. And that is something to worry about. Those are the facts. To learn more about this, David is with the expert who has all the answers. Go ahead, David. Thanks, Mercedes. Now that we've presented the facts, let's have a look at the problem, possible solutions, and draw conclusions. For this, we have the author of the EIB's 2021 Digitalization Report, Desiree Rookhardt. Thanks for joining us. Thank you, David. Desiree, is it fair to say that in 2021, companies were faced with a do or die scenario? Either they adapted to COVID-19 by investing more in digital transformation, or they struggled. I think it's fair to say that the pandemic definitely led to an acceleration of digitalization. A lot of companies reported that they became more digital during the pandemic. Um, and beforehand, it was mostly the most modern and innovative companies that were using advanced digital technologies. But we do observe as well that small firms were much less likely to become more digital during COVID-19 than the larger ones. And besides the size of the company, did you notice any regional differences in terms of investment in digitalization? So yes, if you look at the European map, we do observe uh, huge differences. So um, I think broadly speaking, firms in Northern and Western Europe are more likely to tell us that they became more digital than companies in the South of Europe. And they are a bit more likely to tell us that they, they did something than firms in Central and Eastern Europe. And have any countries surprised you with their performance? Yes, I mean, even if you compare these broad regions, not all countries are alike. So um, Greece, for example, is a candidate that really, really did well. And there's a lot of companies that reported that they become more digital during the crisis. And digitalization is, is, is more than just home deliveries and virtual meetings. Uh, digitalization is much more, right? Yes, yes. And we are very lucky. So with the EIB Investment Survey, we already captured for more than three years where the companies adopted these very advanced digital technologies like 3D printing or advanced robotics. And we see that somehow was put on hold. So there were not more companies in 2020 that adopted those technologies than in the years before. So it seems like the advanced things got a bit on hold in comparison to, to the more basic digitalization things. And as well, if you compare the EU to the US, we see that this gap didn't close. To the contrary, there's a lot of US companies that used the pandemic to accelerate digitalization. And as well, if it comes to innovation, the US is ahead of Europe. It's a perfect time to take a look at the world to take a step back and look at the developing world. Did you know that 2.9 billion people don't even have access to the internet? Fiber optics, broadband, 5G. 
High-speed digital connectivity is at the heart of the 21st century, yet not everyone enjoys the benefits. 37% of the world's population, 2.9 billion people, have never used the internet, and almost all of them live in lower-income countries. Lack of access, high prices, and slow bandwidth make entrepreneurship more difficult and drive away opportunities. My internet before, well, I was using 2G, and uh, it was very, very slow. When I want to study, it becomes difficult. When I want to do my research, when I want to do my online work, it becomes a little bit difficult for me. In this neighborhood of Nairobi, a new and affordable internet connection service supported by the European Investment Bank is turning things around. Without good internet, I couldn't be able to generate the income that I'm now generating and also I couldn't be able to have a job. In Georgia, we are expanding broadband connections to rural communities. 500 kilometers of fiber optics to reach 1,000 towns and 500,000 people. Amirian won't miss a tune anymore. <laughs> To tackle the digital divide is also to build university facilities in Morocco that allow students like Fatima to fulfill their dreams. I think that intelligence artificial is very fascinating. It is part of our quotidian and it améliore constamment. My dream is to become an entrepreneur, create des applications and make des publicities. I can aspire to a career that me passionate. In five years, the IEB has approved over 1 billion euros financing for investments in the digital economy outside the EU. Through the European Commission's Global Gateway Initiative, we are ready to boost smart and secure digital links. In a world of inequalities, global connectivity is the path to a brighter future. That's the situation in the world. And let's get back to Europe, to one figure that's particularly worrying. One in four companies didn't make any digital investment at all in 2021. Desiree, what could the consequences be for these companies? I think I'm most worried about the employees that are in these companies, right? So right now we see that one quarter of companies didn't invest into advanced digital technologies, neither used the pandemic to get more digital. And a lot of people are in these companies and these companies we know they train less often their employees, they pay lower wages and they're a bit less competitive. So I think for them, they lose out on actually getting the skills that are necessary for the, the, the transitions that are necessary in the coming years. How do we turn this situation around, in particular for the small and medium-sized uh, companies? I mean, how do we get them out of this dead end? So what we have seen is that companies that have received the support to become more digital in the last three years are twice as likely to tell us that they become more digital during the pandemic. So it seems that policy support is one angle. And then another one is obviously the better the digital infrastructure is, the more likely it is that companies are as well starting the digitalization journey. So I think there's a lot to do um, if it comes to creating an enabling environment with the skills necessary for the companies and, and the infrastructure in place. And how about Europe's vision for the future? Are we doing all that we can to support these companies and to ensure that they continue to invest in digital transformation and innovation? I think the pandemic was somehow a wake up call. So there is a big appetite from, from policymakers to, to, to speed up the digitalization. It's great that there's a lot of investments happening in digital infrastructure and that skills is on top of the agenda. And I think if you look at what the EIB is doing, I mean, we are supporting SMEs, we're supporting innovation and digitalization. And I think that that is really important going forward forward to close the gap to the US. Indeed, and you, and you know how important the, uh, the fight against climate change is for the, the European Investment Bank. Is there any relationship or link between digital transformation and climate change? Yes, I'm glad that you asked. So, I mean, the, the survey doesn't just capture digitalization, but it looks at, well, and did companies already invest to prepare for climate change? And you see those companies that do very well when it comes to digitalization are as well much more advanced when it comes to taking climate change very seriously and, and, and investing into that. As well, if you look at whether companies do invest into energy efficiency, the digital firms outperform the non-digital firms there. Thank you, Desiree, for the insightful discussions and for your time today. Thank you, David. Now back to Mercedes to draw some conclusions. Thank you, David. So now we have the facts and thanks to Desiree also some valuable insights into the state of digitalization in Europe. Europe is well positioned 
for sure. But clearly, we need to invest more and keep pushing forward to ensure that the European companies are strong and can face any obstacles that come their way. Thank you for watching. See you in the next edition of What's the Matter?